This is Christmas in Europe, as you've never seen it before. From above, we'll take a festive flying tour over the continent, as it welcomes its favorite holiday season, with rich and varied celebrations. From the build-up to the big day, to unique traditions that mark Christmas itself, and the spectacular displays that usher in the new year. Our aerial cameras will reveal Europe's festive transformation from a brand new perspective. We'll soar over Finland's iconic reindeer herds and Estonia's legendary Christmas market. We'll discover France's caroling tradition and Norway's icy landscapes, and even take a trip to Santa's village as Christmas comes to Europe. In this Christmas extravaganza, our cameras will fly through an advent calendar of festive aerial treats, which span the European continent. Our stories begin in the lead up to the holidays, as Europe celebrates this most colorful of festivals. In Germany, Munich's landmark cathedral welcomes the festive season. Across Europe, Christian churches of all denominations become the focus for communities. Towards the east, Lavish architecture signals the splendor of the Orthodox Church. Whilst to the west, Roman Catholic churches soar over picturesque villages. And elegant Protestant spires dominate the skyline of northern European cities. But Europe is home to 750 million people, 200 languages, and all of the major world religions. For believers of every faith, or none at all, Christmas is a time to come together. In December, the city of Krakow in Poland transforms into a festive wonderland. Whilst in the milder south, lights cover Syndagma Square in the heart of Athens as the holidays arrive. In parts of Europe, celebrations begin early. On the 13th of December, locals in Copenhagen parade down canals in kayaks to celebrate Saint Lucia, a third century saint. Whilst in the town of Jevla, in central Sweden, townspeople build a 13-meter-tall straw goat. And there's one place where the holidays start in a puff of steam. Our first Christmas adventure takes us to the United Kingdom and England's south coast, to a unique train. This is the Dartmouth Steam Railway. For most of the year, the train is kept running by sun-seeking tourists who come to explore the rugged coastline. As winter arrives, an extraordinary change takes place. The railway transforms into a magical Christmas destination worthy of Santa himself. And families flock here to kickstart the holiday season. Jack Burnett is one of the engineers responsible for creating a tiny winter wonderland along this 11 kilometer length of track. The train of lights is our highlight event of the year. It's very nice to see the train lit up once it's finished, but um, the actual setup process is at times a little bit crazy. Jack has just a week to get ready. He tests the two and a half kilometers of rope lights before stringing them onto the train. 
If the lights are faulty, it could set him back by days. With the flick of a switch, the carriages erupt into neon colors. It's a small taste of the spectacle that awaits visitors once night falls. Finally, the time arrives to reveal the breathtaking train of lights to the public. The railway throws open its doors and families board the train, ready to revel in the Christmas spirit. From above, it's an unforgettable sight. The train's lights are reflected in the waters of the River Dart. As it ventures into a forest decorated with festive light installations, it becomes a Christmas wonderland to remember for the railway's young visitors. There's like lights and eyes and crystals polar bears and gnomes. And it's really lovely. My favourite thing in the world is trains. One day, I would like to drive the, the train of lights. The railway's transformation leaves its travellers counting down to the big day. This is the second favourite bit about Christmas. <laughs> the first period then. Getting presents on Christmas Day. <laughs> in Turkey, winter transforms the Hagia Sophia with a dusting of snow. Christmas is not the only religious holiday that takes place in December. Many faiths celebrate through the winter months. Jewish believers across Europe gather for Hanukkah, which occurs between late November and December. And some Sikh and Hindu communities celebrate harvest festivals in January. At many religious festivals, music plays an important role. Our next story takes us to northeastern France where the run-up to Christmas wouldn't be complete without a very special floating concert. France's eastern border with Germany is home to Alsace, a famous wine-producing region. But at Christmas, attention turns to its towns, including the picture-perfect Colmar. A canal runs through the center of Colmar's old town, giving the area the name Little Venice. At Christmas, the ancient waterway is the setting for one of Europe's most heartwarming aerial sights. As groups of carol singers turn Little Venice into a floating concert venue. Choir director Aurelie Estatico leads a group of 25 young singers. The Christmas spirit is important, especially when you sing, because it's really a moment of sharing, both in the heart and for the audience, and it's really something very powerful. On the canal, barges set off, filled with local school children, aged between seven and eight. As the choir travel along the canal, they pause several times to sing and spread Christmas cheer before heading towards the historic city center for their final stop. They've been preparing for this for months. I was a little nervous, but when we sang with the others, I wasn't too stressed anymore. The singers pass pretty half-timber houses, which has strong historic German influences. The choir perform J'ai planté un sapin, a French festive song.
In the city centre, the canal is crisscrossed with low arched bridges, and the choir must duck low to pass beneath them. Their final stop is outside the famous covered market at the centre of Colmar. The magical floating concert comes to an end and the festive season has already touched the hearts of many of the town's young residents. I am very happy because I've always dreamt of singing in front of everybody. As winter's grip tightens, the lakes of northern Italy and castles of southern Germany transform into landscapes straight from a storybook as a big freeze descends on Europe. Capitals across the continent take on a fairy tale magic. The rooftops in Riga's historic center are painted white and snow covers the very tops of London's skyscrapers. Even the iconic windmills of the Netherlands transform in the frost. As Christmas shoppers fill the streets looking for last minute gifts, different cultures look forward to opening their presents at different times. In many countries, including Austria and Poland, Christmas begins on the 24th of December. In nations like the UK and Bulgaria, presents are opened on the 25th. But in one corner of the continent, Christmas is a year-round celebration. Our festive adventure reaches Lapland in the Arctic Circle, perhaps the world's most important Christmas destination and the site of an extraordinary logistical challenge. Lapland straddles four countries and is home to the Sami people, one of Europe's last indigenous groups. This far north, the skies are painted with a magical phenomenon, the Northern Lights. And a very special village is located in the snowy wilderness of Finnish Lapland. This is Santa's village. This purpose-built winter wonderland claims to be the home of Father Christmas. Every year, half a million children send letters here addressed to Santa. To deal with all this post, the village is home to an army of elves and a dedicated post office. Head elf, Katja Tervonen, is in charge of this most important of postal services. This is a magical place to work. I can see it from the eyes of the visitors that come to our post office, how amazed they are when they enter this post office. When children write to Santa at his Lapland address, the letters first arrive in Finland's capital, Helsinki. Trucks that carry the letters join Finland's longest highway and drive over 900 kilometers north. On the final leg to the village, delivery drivers must brave temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. Every day, as many as 30,000 letters can arrive at Santa's village. The letters are unloaded as quickly as possible. Every moment spent outside is bitterly cold, so speed is of the essence. Messages come from as far away as Japan. And it's the elves job to read and sort each one. Katya's team even send out replies to a lucky few. It is definitely a privilege to read these letters that Santa receives from all over the world. As well as Santa's post office, the boundary of the Arctic Circle runs through Santa's village, and crossing it, visitors find themselves officially in the Arctic. Traveling through the snowy landscape here 
is even possible on a husky sleigh ride. Evidence suggests that the early ancestors of these hardy huskies lived in the Arctic over 9,000 years ago. As darkness falls over Santa's village, it's the end of a successful day for Katya and her team. I definitely feel that me and my team, we are a part of this Christmas magic. By mid-December, the Christmas tree industry is in full swing. Farms across Europe produce over 50 million Christmas trees each year. The custom of putting up trees began in 16th century Germany. Today, for some, it's a fundamental part of preparing for Christmas. And one country elevates the traditional Christmas tree to a work of art. Traveling east across the continent, we arrive in the Baltic region. It's home to a Christmas tree unlike any other. Over half a million people live in Lithuania's capital, Vilnius. Its medieval center is famous for its mosaic of red tile roofs. But at Christmas, all eyes turn to the old town's cathedral square. Every year, Vilnius's remarkable Christmas tree thrills the residents of this Baltic city. And no two trees are ever the same. This dazzling light installation is part engineering marvel and part work of art. It's up to designer Dominikas Konsevichos to make sure this year's tree lives up to its reputation. Every year, all of my friends and acquaintances ask how this year's Christmas tree will look. But I won't tell because I don't want to spoil the Christmas miracle for them. Each year, assembling the tree is a race against time that's best viewed from above. At 27 meters tall, the tree is too large to arrive in one piece. A three-ton steel base, sturdy enough to withstand even the harshest winter conditions, is topped with two upper layers using a crane. When the tree is decorated, it will weigh an enormous eight tons. Heavy enough that its own weight will secure it to the ground. Dominikas and his team have just 11 days to decorate the structure for the big public reveal. They hang 3,000 artificial branches onto the metal frame. The main challenge is that there are loads of decorations. This year's Christmas tree is very heavy. The mirrors alone weigh almost half a ton. All the snowflakes weigh around two tons. Dangling precariously in the air, the workers uncover large mirrors. Bolts hold them directly on the frame, and steel straps are added for extra safety. Two kilometers of string lights adorn the installation. To unveil the tree on time, workers labor late into the night to apply the finishing touches. As night falls, Cathedral Square explodes into light. This year's tree is dominated by 96 illuminated snowflakes, each with a unique shape. And it's crowned by an enormous six meter wide star that shines in the night sky. Towering 27 meters high, the tree brings delight to everyone who views it. Everything is very beautiful, sparkly, fabulous. Yes. Yes. As Christmas creeps closer, Polish bathers indulge in a popular winter activity, a mood-boosting dip. 
And our next adventure takes us to a scene straight out of a fairy tale. Our festive tour continues to Estonia to delight in an aerial spectacle which enthralls a city. In Tallinn, Estonia's capital, preparations are underway for one of Europe's most memorable Christmas sights. From above, the white roofs of Tallinn's medieval heart appear like scenes from a fairy tale. The 13th century town hall here is North Europe's oldest. And old Thomas, the guardian of Tallinn, gazes down from its crowning tower. Each year, under old Thomas's watchful eye, the square below transforms into a setting for one of Europe's most picturesque Christmas traditions. Tallinn is home to a Christmas folk dance like no other. Performers whirl in mesmerizing patterns around the market stalls. Greta Perolainen is one of the dancers performing this year. I really enjoy dancing in the Christmas market because we get together with friends and then uh, we can chat a little, dance a little and it's also amazing because the public starts clapping and the energy there is excellent. Greta and her friends perform three traditional folk dances, which date from the 19th century. They break into pairs to perform a dance that mimics a waltz. Our unique aerial perspective captures the beautiful symmetry of the dancers as they form concentric rings. As the couples parade around the square, their traditional clothing flares out around them. Estonia has a rich variety of different folk costumes. The striped skirts Greta wears are from Audru in Western Estonia. They date from the 19th century and were originally decorated with silk ribbons. Other skirts, like those in blue and white, come from the north of the country. The most festive part of the men's clothing are tall felt hats, originally made with sheep's wool. Later, as twilight falls over Tallinn, the old town is set ablaze with Christmas lights as this snow-covered square takes on a timeless Baltic charm and the dancers have a moment to relax. The snow is falling and there are different decorations everywhere and people are drinking mulled wine. Christmas is uh, really magical for me. Across the continent, Europeans hope for a white Christmas. And for a lucky few, their dreams come alive. As finally, the big day arrives. Christmas is here. Each country celebrates the special day with its own traditions. In Czechia, the traditional Christmas meal is carp. In Ireland's capital, Dublin, an icy dip gives Christmas morning some added excitement. And in Northern Europe, Christmas includes some very special animals. Our first Christmas Day story takes us back to the Arctic Circle, into Lapland, where the celebrations are shared with a few of Santa's friends. It's Christmas morning in Lapland, and Santa is away doing his rounds. The streets are empty as families across the region's capital, Rovaniemi, are busily opening presents at home. Outside the city, for the region's farmers, Christmas comes with a surprising twist. 
Katya and Yuka Alayevi live on a 10 hectare farm. Their young nieces are arriving to enjoy the Christmas celebrations with them. And Katya and Yuka want to make sure the house is just right for their visit. But before they arrive, Katya and Yuka have farm work to do. And this far north, that means just one thing. Reindeer. The snowy forests that surround the couple's farm are home to around 300 reindeer. Their reindeer are semi-wild. They roam free in the summer months, but in the winter, most travel back to the farm where they receive extra food. By Christmas Day, Katya and Yuka's reindeer have arrived home. When the reindeers return, we are full of joy to see them again. Whilst most Laplanders are preparing their Christmas lunch, the couple load a sleigh with food for the animals and attach it to a snowmobile. They then set out to find the herd. Both male and female reindeer have antlers, though only the females keep theirs through the winter months. On the farm, the males, females and younger reindeer are kept apart, so each group receives enough food without competition. In the middle of the forest, the feed begins. The reindeer eat a special mix of protein, salt, vitamins and dried hay from the fields. It's thought that reindeer were first domesticated 2,000 years ago. And there are around 200,000 in Finnish Lapland, outnumbering the people that live here. An American poet in the 1800s first associated reindeer with Christmas and although Katya and Yuka have never seen a reindeer fly, they're not willing to rule it out. We really think reindeers are part of our family, just like a pet. After the feed, Katya and Yuka pick up their two nieces, Mintu and Nella, for a Christmas treat. This far north, twilight is at just three o'clock on Christmas Day so they don't have long to enjoy a sleigh ride before the traditional Christmas sauna. My favorite thing to do during the Christmas is uh, eat chocolate and go to sauna. It's a welcome burst of warmth in the cold winter months. Once they are finished, Katya and Yuka and their nieces gather in their cottage for a hot drink around the fireplace. Cozy inside, they toast each other, Christmas and the year ahead. And the children dream of magical reindeer heading across the night sky for a well-earned rest. For much of Europe, Christmas occurs on the 25th of December, a date close to the winter solstice. It's followed by Epiphany on the 6th of January celebrated as Three Kings Day in Spain. But some Orthodox Christians follow an older calendar in which Christmas takes place on the 7th of January. In our next story, Orthodox celebrations include an ancient tradition. A journey into Orthodox Europe takes us southeast to Serbia where Christmas arrives in a burst of flames. On the eve of Orthodox Christmas Day, Belgrade, the city's capital, gears up for an incredible celebration. This is Saint Sava, one of the largest Orthodox churches in the world. 
St. Sava is famed for its incredible gold mosaics and an enormous 4,000-ton central dome. But at Christmas, it's also the scene of a unique Serbian tradition, a ceremonial bonfire called the burning of the Badniak. Mladen Kovacevic is the church's protodeacon. For me personally, it always reminds me of some good old times. When a person is young and still in the family circle, it reminds me of all that tradition and certain customs which come with celebrating Christmas. The burning of the Badniak likely predates Christianity, but today it's an intrinsic part of the local Orthodox tradition. Members of the public can bring their own oak branches to the church to join the bonfire. Priests process towards the oak pile and it is set alight. As the branches burn, prayers take place around the bonfire. With the smell of the fire still in their noses, worshippers file into the church. Inside, their eyes are met with glittering gold that appears to sparkle off every surface. In the church of St. Sava, icons of Jesus Christ tower 70 meters above the believers. An enormous 20 meter wide chandelier is suspended above them. And walls on all sides surround the congregation with over 12,000 square meters of gold mosaics. This church is a very unique space, and it's a wonderful feeling when a great number of people gather, especially since it's a time of gift giving. Lots of children come, so that's really a great joy because in this way happiness is multiplied, love is multiplied. In the days following Christmas, the festivities are far from over. Across Europe, people gear up to enjoy the next stage of the holiday season, as the skies explode with fireworks, to welcome in the new year. In Reykjavik, Iceland's capital, bonfires are lit to mark the new year. In Portugal, street celebrations continue through the night. Whilst in some parts of Europe, the new year is seen in with a snarl and a growl. Our New Year celebrations take us to Pernik in Western Bulgaria, where the new year is welcomed with a monstrous parade. In the village of Bartanovci, inhabitants take part in Surva, a millennia-old practice. Over two days of festivities, men and women known as Kukari crowd the streets dressed in handmade costumes and terrifying masks. These are designed to scare away bad spirits and welcome good luck in the coming year. Emil Mladenov has been participating in Surva since he was a child. As the morning of the celebration arrives, Emil airs out his heavy costume made of animal skins and dresses in bells that weigh 40 kilos. We can't wait for the evening to arrive so the whole group can go out together in the center to jingle, drum and have a good time. Over the Surva festival, groups of participants process from door to door through villages across Bulgaria. At each house, they are welcomed with food and gifts and enact scenes from folklore to bring good health to the households of the town. This tradition used to be reserved for young men, but today everyone can take part. 
всички се проведат. On the first night of the festival, this monster's parade hits full swing. Our aerial cameras follow the crowds as they process into the main square of Bartonovsi. The crowning glory of any costume is the mask, made from wood and the skin and horns of animals. Gathered together in their awesome costumes, Emil and the other Kukeri are more than a match for any evil spirits lurking in Bartonovsi. In Hungary, locals embrace the freezing cold and crowd onto Europe's biggest outdoor ice rink. Whilst further north, the cold turns nature itself into a playground. Flying north to Norway, a wintry treat lies just outside the capital, Oslo. Oslo is home to around one million people and sits on Norway's southern coastline at the top of the Oslofjord. Once Christmas Day and the flurry of gift-giving has passed, many of the city's inhabitants turn to an outdoor pursuit to burn off the excesses of Christmas. This is the Ustmarka Nature Reserve. As temperatures dip, the lakes here freeze over and bring a brief moment of delight to the city's skaters. Lake Nuklovan is one of the largest of the forest's many lakes. And in the days after Christmas, families flock here to try out new skates and hockey sticks on this all-natural ice rink, nearly three and a half kilometers long. It's up to Oystein Kolset to check that the ice here is safe to skate on. I love the, the cold, the snow. It's quite quiet outside. A different type of air. So I always liked the winter. First, he uses a hand drill to make a hole in the ice so he can measure its depth. Today, it's 50 centimeters deep. Then, he cuts into the ice with a chainsaw. Oystein needs to check the composition of the ice. There are two main categories, steel and white ice. Oystein finds that the lake is mainly coated with steel ice, which is denser just right to welcome crowds who come to revel in the festive weather. And at the height of the winter season, Lake Nurklevan's smooth icy surface makes it a perfect location to practice the kind of spins you'd usually see in competitions. Kamila Yeshem is a five-time Norwegian figure skating champion. On the ice, she practices complex combination spins that have taken years to master. It's a kind of freedom to be outside and enjoy the nature and the open space. Ice skating dates back at least 3,000 years and has its roots in Scandinavia. The ancient people here would strap animal bones to their feet allowing them to glide over the ice. The modern metal blades of Camilla's skates gain perfect purchase on the smooth surface of the lake. And our unique aerial perspective reveals her show-stopping abilities from an incredible new angle. It's really special to skate outside because it's only seasonal, so I really look forward to the winter. The new year brings a flurry of activity. Locals in Madrid make the most of a surprising snowstorm before returning to work. 
In Switzerland, the annual Belle Alp Hexa takes place. This is a skiing event where witches hurtle down alpine ski slopes whilst balancing broomsticks. And on the French side of the mountain range, a unique festival brightens the skies. What better way to finish our Christmas adventure than with an aerial trip to the snowy French Alps to see out the new year with a bang? The Alps straddle the French border with Switzerland and Italy and are home to Western Europe's highest peak, Mont Blanc. At the new year, they turn into a winter playground with thousands flocking here to celebrate on the slopes. As the new year progresses, the resort of Courchevel also plays host to a gathering of fireworks enthusiasts who arrive to compete in the International Fireworks Festival. Ferenc Tóth is a Hungarian fireworks master. He's arrived hoping to impress the judges at the festival this year. I love working with fireworks because it makes me happy and excited. I can make a beautiful display for people, so it's my passion. Ferenc has spent weeks preparing for this prestigious competition from his base in Hungary. His fireworks display will last 15 minutes, with the fireworks reaching heights of 200 meters. To make the best fireworks, we have to use a good drama, the best product, and the best music. As night falls in Courchevel, Ski instructors from the nearby school descend the alpine slopes carrying lit torches that glow like fireflies in the inky night. After the torchlight descent, it's Ferenc's moment to shine. Fountains fizz and Roman candles burn as Ferenc's fireworks burst into multicolors high above the heads of spectators, bathing the entire town in a magical glow. The feeling of seeing it in real life is something quite impressive, especially since I was really close to the fireworks. For Ferenc, his hard work has paid off. The competition organizers agree, as Ferenc and his team win the jury's prize. And the warmth of the fireworks delights skiers gathered below. When I see uh, audience to be happy, uh, it makes me happy also, and uh, makes me do one more fireworks and one more fireworks, and give them pleasure. Our Christmas aerial adventure is at an end. And from across Europe, we come together to wish you and those close to you a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good year.